see the, uh, the the importance and the relevance of the variable you're Got interested it. in. Well, so we've got this sort of experimental approach in social science, this experimental sort of psychology, social psychology, even sociology, I suppose. Mm -hmm. is, is these are all being being using the classic scientific method are being tackled. Right. Uh, for those of you just joining us, this is High Tech Fever Tech TV. I'm your host, Joe Smolson. My guest today, joining me again, Justin Cook, scholar in the realm of prospect theory and, and the, the sort of applied experimental social methods of, of looking at how we take decisions and so forth. Justin, you were telling us just just a moment ago about this recent conference you were at. And, yeah. And, 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 and what are some example things that, that bubbled up there that are, that are sort of case examples of doing this kind of experimental work? Well, there's, uh, there was a presentation by uh, a professor at the University of Chicago, mm. uh, Christopher Shee, that uh, I thought was uh, was pretty exciting. I thought uh, I thought uh, might talk about it here today. Sure, well. yeah, okay. And it, it dealt with towels. <laughs> Indeed, well, there were towels. Things, but towels. <laughs> but towels. Now, what about towels? Well, uh, you know, towels have many attributes. They have color and size and and softness, for mm. instance. But how how people end up making decisions about which, which towel they're going to buy. Yeah. Uh, can vary quite a bit uh, depending on you know the comparisons that you ask people to make. So we've got an example set up here for you. What 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 do we have here, Dustin? Well, well so uh, we have a, a picture of two different towels uh -huh. that uh, that was part of a part of this experiment. So there was uh, towel A, which was a, a brown towel. Not many people really liked the color of this towel, but uh, it was it was definitely a little softer than the okay. other. Okay. And then there was towel B, which people generally thought was better looking, nicer, ah, but, but but not quite as soft. So, and uh, you know, there was a group of people that uh, were brought in separately that you know were allowed to actually have these towels, physically mm -hmm. feel them, evaluate the towels for their own experience, right, right. and decide which towel they prefer. Okay, that was the general case. But then there were also broken broken uh, into different subject groups, subjects that were asked to do something a little different. Okay. And they were asked to focus in on the softness of okay. the towel. And, and, and how do you render that? Well, uh, one way that, uh, that they did that in the experiment was to do something a little bit arbitrary, is to have people just draw circles. So that's that what we've got going on here. Yeah. So the circles that represented the softness of the towel. Okay. So, uh, you know, they would hand draw these, and, and basically, you were, they were told that the bigger circle meant that it was softer. Okay. So subjects drew, you know, two different circles to represent for themselves right. their own subjective experience with how soft each of these two towels were. And then, on the basis of this kind of uh, kind of circle-based stuff, what are you asking? Well, there's several different ways that you can compare circles, right? Mm -hmm. So one one group uh, within this subset now was asked, okay, you know, let's figure out the diameter of the two circles that you drew. And the, the yeah. subjects were mostly engineering right. students, so <laughs> they so knew what the sense. diameter was. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, the diameter of a circle, you know, can vary a, a fair bit, but it doesn't vary as much as other dimensions of the circle. So in this case, uh, you know, if the one diameter is three centimeters right. on the it's bigger right circle, you know, maybe the, the other one is two centimeters. And then when people do the kind of mental comparison, right. there's a ratio. If you, if you put these in a ratio, it's right. about 1.5. So that's the current case. Then what? That's the current case. Well, then, then uh, there was a separate group that you know drew their own circles, but uh, instead of evaluating the diameter, they were asked to compare the areas. So it's the same set of circles, but instead you've got those uh, n not a linear dimension, but a, an area dimension. Exactly. And then what changes is this ratio. The ratio. The ratio. And, and you think this is? I mean, this is seemingly pretty arbitrary. To I mean, you have to pick one or the other, but. But there's nothing one way or the other that seems the right way. Right. And the subjects, they have the towels right there. They can so choose for themselves which God. towel they like. God. But So then what happens? So well, you've got the actual towel, yeah. and you've gone through this little exercise with one pool looking at diameter, one pool looking at area. Mm -hmm. What then happens? Well, then uh, you, you ask these different subject groups when yeah. they're done with this, you know, which towel they prefer. Towel so they remember was the this brown is the towel. This the towels purchased. Or towels that they pick. That they pick exactly, okay. and then and uh, over here on this axis, we've got the, the the percentage of everybody who picks the towel, a, the brown towel. Yes, the towel, a, the the not as pretty, the ugly towel that's, ugly that's brown softer. Towel. Okay. Now, what this this of the three cases, this is the case where. That's the case where there was no specification, so you didn't ask them to make comparisons. Okay. Uh, on a certain dimension. 
Okay. Uh, but then the other cases are where things get really All interesting. Right, so let's take a look at this again. Now, what are these so, two? So that no specifications kind of like the control. That right. We were talking Got about it. Earlier. So the, the so, next, ah, so the one that you have your finger near is the uh, diameter specification. So just look so. at that linear dimension, and it doesn't really adjust people's attitudes about which one they'd pick. Right. But, but this, this, what exactly. is up with this? So, so this is purely on the basis of, of the, the area ratio. You've, you've, you've gotten them to go through this calculation, and they say, right. wow, this is over two times the, the area ratio, even though it's only one and a half times the diameter ratio. Right. But that two versus one and a half, what, what's going on here? What, why, do they, why do they pick, on the basis of this arbitrary right. area ratio, disproportionately more of the one that's bigger? Well, you can never know for sure, but the, the theory is, is that, that people are kind of internally comparing these ratios and that, uh, you know, they kind of mentally evaluate the circle differently when you ask them to look at area look at versus, area. versus diameter. And that comparison of areas of circles, right, which is an abstraction away from the underlying tiles, even with the tiles the in tiles hand, present. Yes, exactly. you're still, you're, this, this data shows that, that, that a disproportionate percentage, right. now that they've gone through this circle drawing exercise, mm -hmm. calculate area and decide the brown soft decide that uh, suddenly they're in love with so the what's this, soft what's brown this, what's going on here what's this called this phenomenon because this is interesting right if you're trying to sell something you're trying to get people to take a decision you want to mm -hmm. get them to be thinking you know along right. these lines right. right this is this is going to influence your commercials your advertising your your propaganda how you frame a sales pitch right right uh, so you know the general area is just attributes or mm -hmm. or comparisons uh, when it comes to, to people judging this but it has real world implications I mean it's one thing we talk about drawing circles and towels and you know it may not seem relevant but uh, marketers often have a lot of power over you know mm. the dimensions that they ask people to compare things on megapixels and cameras right, or, right, you know, all right. these things and that was a, there was a separate study yeah, on that right. actually but so all these things that are so we, we have another different. live example right here well sure. what's, what's going on here we've got in this case it's a it's a an LCD TV plasma TV and mm -hmm. yet doing the same kind of Di uh, diagonal dimension, which is like a diameter, versus area, we have this this kind of phenomenon. Like right. the same basic uh, this this ratio business, and and what happens if people well, see the area, they think, wow, this yeah. slightly bigger TV is actually a lot bigger. So if uh, if you're marketing these TVs and what you're, are you aware, gonna you're aware of the towel <laughs> experiment, I mean, for for some reason the industry has chosen to look diagonal, at yeah. the diagonal ratio. But this implies that the industry has got it wrong. They need to be. That's right. Then anybody who who says, "Listen, we've got twice the surface area screen. Never right. mind your piddly, you know, fifty percent more diagonal. Mm -hmm. Twice the surface area sounds a lot better. That's right. Than fifty percent longer." And people would probably be more attracted to the bigger juices. Wow. So what are some other uh, sort of tasty examples from this realm of doing these kind of experiments? And, and, and well, you know, uh, one, one thing that this ties kind of neatly into is this uh, idea we talked about a little bit towards the beginning, this, this coherent arbitrariness. Mm. Like, how do we know that we like soft towels in the first place? Maybe thinner towels are better. I don't know. But uh, at some point, you know, we made a judgment about softness. And we kind of stuck to it, you know. And you can think of that as an individual level or a society right. influencing the individual. But that was really a somewhat arbitrary decision. Right, right. Uh, which, you know, throws the economists for loops because, you know. It's not you normal know, orthodox. Uh, that's right. You should know how much you value something or, or whether you, at least whether it's a good thing to have, has right. utility, or it's negative, has negative utility. So uh, Dan Ariely, we've talked about him of course, before. Yeah. Of course, uh, along with uh, uh, Drazen Prelik and uh, George Lowenstein, had uh, have written about uh, coherent arbitrariness, uh, including uh, there's a Federal Reserve paper that's kind of a working paper on the Tom Sawyer effect. Tom Sawyer effect. Tom One of my Sawyer favorite effect. books as a kid, Tom Sawyer by Mark Twain. Well, you remember uh, whitewashing the fence? Ooh, whitewashing the fence, where he turned a chore into an opportunity for everybody else to pay him <laughs> to whitewash the, white the fence. That was amazing. I've, I've, I'm not usually <laughs> successful at talking to my friends into doing something and paying me for the privilege. <laughs> well, you got me on the show. <laughs> oh, please. <laughs> hey, yeah. uh, but, but what's going on at the Tom Sawyer effect? And, and is this actually relevant to, to economics and to you know, doing business? Uh, it, I'd argue that it is very relevant. And uh, you know what's going on, uh, again, we can 
debate. It's not entirely clear, but we, we know what we observe. Mm. We know what we observe from the experiments. Uh, so uh, one of the experiments was a